Crop Talk on Market Journal is supported by Nebraska's soybean farmers and their checkoff. Finally today, soybean producers will be without one of their tools in their toolbox for this growing season. A federal court in Arizona ruled that the Environmental Protection Agency must vacate their 2020 registrations for dicamba products. On this week's Crop Talk, we sat down with Libby Walsh from the Nebraska Department of Agriculture to learn how this could impact your operation. Today on Crop Talk, we're discussing dicamba. Joining us in the studio is Libby Walsh. She is the Nebraska Department of Agriculture Pesticide Program Manager. Thank you very much for joining us. And we've got some news to talk about because what is the current status of RUP dicamba products? Mm -hmm. Hi, Bryce. So uh, last winter, the uh, fed federal court in Arizona vacated the current registrations of three RUP dicamba products, Tavium, Ingenia, and Extendamax. That means um, that they are no longer registered products and available for use. They did issue an existing stocks last year that did allow for the applications to still take place during the 2024 growing season. But as of right now, um, there there's no approved methods for over the top applications of dicamba. I imagine you have to be getting some questions on this <laughs> topic then in particular as we're preparing for the 2025 growing season, the short question is, what do producers do that are planning on dicamba soybeans? So no, there, there's no workaround for anyone that's had an applicator license or, you know, gone to our trainings. Our biggest thing is the label is the law. So all pesticide products are going to say it is a violation of federal law to use this product inconsistent with its labeling. And, uh, um, you know, that means you need to follow the label. And uh, the products that are still out there and available with dicamba, they're going to contain statements that we, um, it's a mandatory label language, but it's going to be say things like for pre plant only or post, um, you know, do not use post emergent on soybeans. So anyone using those products against the label, that's what we'd call a label violation. Um, you know, without these products being available, Producers are going to have to work with their crop consultants and seed dealers to come up with a plan for 2025. Um, with the Extendiflex traits, they do still allow for over-the-top applications of glyphosate and glufosinate. So those are products that are still in the toolbox for our producers. Back on the label, you talked about that kind of being a legally binding uh, situation. How? What's the enforcement behind that? Yeah, so pesticides are regulated under FIFRA. That's the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. It's overseen by EPA, but uh, the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, we have primacy, meaning we're the ones to enforce it. And we do that by, you know, routine inspections and complaint investigations. Our routine inspections consist of, you know, going into dealers and marketplaces, ensuring that, you know, what is for sale on the shelf is in fact an EPA approved product and, you know, not something that someone's cooking up in their basement or has been on the back shelf for 50 years. So we do those and we also ensure that the products that are being sold, such as, you know, RUPs, those are gonna have record keeping requirements. They're gonna be, you know, what we call the higher risk pesticides and we don't want those in the hands of unlicensed professionals. So people that are licensed to apply those, they attend training courses. Um, we ensure basically that those products are being sold to the correct individuals as part of our routine inspections as well. Um, our inspectors will also do uh, what we call use observations and will stop on the, you know, they might stop someone they see out spraying and ensure, ensure that they are licensed correctly and that they are applying products correctly, um, both to, you know, protect the users and the environment. Mm -hmm. um, another part of pesticide compliance then is going to be the complaint investigations and those um, we do when we receive a call to the, our department, you know, of a possible mis pesticide misuse. Um, with those allegations then we do require photos if it's a herbicide related and then we might send a field inspector out to further investigate the, uh, the situation. Um, if it is deemed a, you know, a possible misuse, we'll look at weather records, we take tissue samples, um, statements, product labels, um, we then compile those all into a report and compare it back with the label because like I said before, the, the label's the law, everything goes back to the label. So uh, with those records, you know, if there was determined to be a violation, whether that's wind speed or rate or site, then, you know, we'll assign violations based off that. What I'm hearing from you, it doesn't really matter if producers like it or not, this is what the reality is here in 2025, but 
guess I'm curious your thoughts as somebody who has seen this for several years now with uh, the position you're in. What can we expect for a timeline perhaps on dicamba moving forward? So the, the new Pesticide Registration Improvement Act, they require, it's, a, it's about a 17 month process from when the products are submitted for registration and then they go through the review process and then you know that includes the open comment period. Um, EPA is also going to be using their finalized herbicide strategy to review the labels um, and then after that we usually will hear some you know sort of announcement but um, if there's no roadblocks maybe October 2025 mm -hmm. Um, there's also been, you know, word, um, it was a recent DT, DTN article that due to funding, it might take EPA a little bit longer to push that out as well. So at this point, sounds like we need to be advising producers plan without it, but something could change and people can stay up to date by contacting the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, correct? That's correct. Um, as of right now, I'd go ahead and expect there no to, to be no, no over-the-top dicamba for this year. But you can definitely, you know, contact us if you have any questions. Our direct line is 402-471-2351. Um, you can also sign up for updates directly from EPA on their website. And we do have a newsletter we push out too. So um, we encourage everyone to sign up for that as well.